know, you gotta love a drive to fish camp, especially when you're driving to a place that offers world-class trophy smallmouth bass fishing. Coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we are in Northeastern Ontario at Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge, and we're on the make for these giant smallmouths. This big fish adventure starts right now on The New Fly Fisher. The new Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. One of the wonderful things about Northeastern Ontario is the wide variety of do-it-yourself, drive-to locations you can visit. This week, I'm headed to Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge located about three hours northeast of Sudbury, Ontario. The lodge offers access to eight private lakes for excellent multi-species fishing, as well as comfortable cabins, great food, and a fully equipped bait shop. But I'm here for the trophy smallmouth bass this lodge is known for. Having arrived and settled in the night before, I was anxious to get out on the water in search of big smallmouth. All right, day one here at Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge. It's gonna be a hot one today, still calm. Um, hopefully the top water bite will be on. A short boat ride from my cottage took me to my first lake, where I hopped into a boat and set off on the hunt for big fish. I was looking at the map of the lake, of this lake, one of seven or eight that uh, Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge has access to. Um, and this one looks good to me because it's got, uh, as far as I can see, an inflow out to our right here and then an outflow at the back of the lake and all kinds of little pikey, bassy kind of looking bays. Um, so I'm gonna go to the high percentage spot first, uh, which is the inflow. There should be uh, cool oxygenated water there. If there's any bait fish or anything coming down the river, um, there should be predators waiting there to, uh, to ambush and to eat. So I'm gonna start with the streamer and um, see what we can come up with. I love fishing new water. It's, uh, it's like figuring out a puzzle, right? It's just super fun. Cast upstream and retrieve it on a tight line through, want to hit the seams where the bubbles are. Not unlike trout fishing, because that's generally where the food will be coming down. And then work your way down through the current so that you end up swinging across both seams. And I think there could be fish anywhere An hour talk. Well, it's mid-morning and uh, decided to come to this lake, uh, try for some topwater smallmouth. And, um, you know, I made the choice to fish the left side of the lake for a very good reason. That reason being that if you look to the right side of the lake, that whole side is in shadow. The left side starts with sun and has sun on it for the majority of the day. Sun will warm things up, we'll get bait fish moving, we'll get predator fish moving, 
and uh, hopefully these bass will be looking up. So I like to start my day on the sunny side of the lake where things are warmer, quicker, and maybe things get moving just that much faster on that part. Let's take a look at early season smallmouth bass habits in Ontario's north. Right after ice out on many lakes, smallmouth bass go through a physical metabolic change as winter loosens its icy grip. As the water starts to warm up, fish start to prepare for the annual spawn. Male smallmouth bass will relate to shallow water bays with the females literally hanging off the shallow water breaks in deeper water waiting for the optimal spawning temperature. As the males feed up to prepare for the spawn, they will be looking in the shallows for a variety of food sources. Right after ice out, when the water is still bitterly cold, smallmouth bass have been observed attacking the cold water minnow bait balls which are searching for warmer water. Food sources at this time will also be cold water reactive, meaning slow, and the bass know it. Insect larvae and nymphs, emerging amphibians, and a vital food source in many bodies of water, crayfish, make up the majority of a bass's early season diet. So when targeting early season bass, keep in mind metabolism is the key to your presentation. Generally, the slower you go, the more success you'll see. So we started the morning fishing surface poppers and the wind has kicked up significantly. Um, so I feel like I'm losing the poppers in the waves. We'll save that for the evening when it calms down again. So I'm switching over to a big streamer, uh, a white Murdoch minnow. And we're gonna see if we can get some bass. We've got an island here and an island here and there's gotta be a saddle in the middle, uh, probably with some structure. There's a loon feeding right there. Uh, so that's a good sign. We might might pick something up. There might be some bait fish here. There might be some cruising smallmouth. Hopefully, we'll figure it out. Well, systematically, when you're fishing a new water body, I like to start from the top and work my way down the water column. Started with top water poppers, didn't do anything, moved to a streamer, didn't do anything. So I'm gonna go low and slow. Maybe these guys want it on the bottom. So I've tied on a crayfish pattern. Fish. On the drop. So what we've got is we've got an island in a nice one in the middle of this lake, and there's a, a, a long tapered um, shoal that comes off, like a secondary point that comes off that nice small move uh, that comes off the island, and it, it's very gradual. So I switched to a crayfish-looking streamer, uh, brown and green. And uh, this guy came over and ate it. So sometimes you do, you have to slow things down to make it happen. This might be the beginning of something really good. Oh, they just dog down. Now when fighting fish that are really strong, a good tip is to bury the butt of your fly rod in your forearm. That gives you the leverage, so it's not all on your wrist, it's all on your forearm, and you, you can really fight these fish. This is a six weight rod, and this little guy's doing some, bending it over quite well. They are fun, and they are super strong, pound for pound in fresh water. Not a giant, but it'll do. So it's important when you're handling fish to keep your hands wet. And a great way to do it if you don't want to risk going overboard is just lift them up, tap the bottom of the fish. You can then support their body. Remove the fly. Take a look. Let them go. 
Look at the color, look at the tiger stripes, eh? How cool is that? Just gorgeous, gorgeous fish. And done, perfect. Sometimes the first one's the hardest one. We're onto something now. There's a fish. Nice. This feels like a good one. Get this guy on the reel. Oh yeah. So I switched things up a little bit and I added, it'd be interesting to see which fly it took. I added a Scotty's McFly to the back of this, um, this crayfish pattern and uh, the fish took the Scotties. So I've got a two fly rig on here now. So it looks like a, a minnow chasing a crayfish and this guy came and ate it. Another good smallmouth bass. So you need to check your regulations where you're fishing. Um, here you are allowed two flies. Um, I know some states you're allowed three, some, some states you're allowed two, some provinces you're allowed two. Um, in some areas within the province, you're only allowed one. One fly, so check your regs and have some fun, switch it up, experiment. This guy's wrapped up a bit. There we go. Get, get him in the net, perfect. Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge, located between the towns of Gauganda, Ontario, and Elk Lake, is on the shores of Lost Lake itself. With all private cabins, you can choose full American plan offerings or a housekeeping package. All cabins are situated with spectacular views of Lost Lake and equipped with full kitchens, satellite TV, three or four piece bathrooms, and all the amenities of home. But you'll want to bring your own towels. Pet friendly, the lodge provides great Wi-Fi and the entertainment room is welcoming for all anglers after a day of fishing on one of Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge's access to eight unpressured lakes. Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge really is home away from home for anglers from all over the world. Oh, there's a fish, picked it up. Nice fish too. So we abandoned the, uh, the Rocky Point theory and moved over to structure on shoreline. So what we've got is a beaver dam to our right and then a bunch of logs and rocks and overhanging cedar trees. I pitched one underneath this cedar tree, let it sit for a minute, gave it a twitch. And this good bass came out and decided he would play long. Took the Scotty's McFly, the bottom fly. Slow and steady, right? That's the key. On tough days, slow things down. Smally in the hole. There's a fish. Oh, nice one. Good fish. Good bass. This one took the Scotty's McFly. So the pattern for these fish are rocky shorelines on islands that have the wind blowing into them. That's where these fish are coming from. All, all of them today have come from that spot that same structure, and we haven't been able to pull much off of anything else. So the fish will tell you what, where they are and what they're looking for. And it's, you know, the, the flies hit the water, they're weighted, they sink, and on your first move, there's weight. That's, that's exactly what's going on. So they're keying in, coming over, sucking it up, and away you go. Oh, 
Come on, buddy, out from under there. No, 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 no. Come on. Get out from under there. All right, fine, you can go that way. I just don't want to get you caught on the engine. Just hooked in the corner of the mouth. Good small mouth. Nice. Well, the slow day has picked up. <laughs> Best fish of the trip. How do you like that? Awesome small mouth. Scotty's McFly right in the corner. That's what it's all about. Day one was fun, but the big fish are still out there. Hopefully, tomorrow, we'll catch some giants. Day two here at Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge. The weather this morning is calm with bluebird skies. Today, I'll be taking an ATV to another lake in search of some great brook trout fishing in the area. One of the first things that I do when I come to a lake that I know nothing about is I explore the lake. Um, and while I'm exploring the lake, I'm looking for inflows of water, outflows of water, um, kind of any sort of structure that you might see. You have to remember that what you see hanging out from the shoreline is typically what's going to continue under the surface of the water. So if it's a cliff, it's going to continue to drop. Or if it's a secondary point, it's going to sort of move out. So extrapolating what you see on the shoreline allows you to sort of have an idea of what's going on underwater. How fun is that? <laughs> Looking for big ones, you see little ones flicking in the foam. So I put on a small elk hair caddis with 6X tippet. Caught ourselves a teeny tiny little brook trout, but when you can take these fish on surface flies, it doesn't matter. It's absolutely perfect. They get quite big in this lake. This guy is not a big one, but Go play. Thanks, dude. Go grow up. Got him. So good. They're little fish, but they're just fantastic on dry flies. In eight inches of water, no brookies. So good. We love this style of fishing. Yeah. Sure, the fish may not be big, but it doesn't matter because it's head hunting. And what you're doing is you're looking for heads coming up, you're looking for splashes and rings, make your way over there as quickly as you can and try to pattern that fish as to which direction it's going um, or if it's staying in, in, its, in its feeding lie and then placing that precision cast right where you think it is, having them come up and eat it, there's nothing like it. It doesn't matter the size of the fish, it doesn't matter at all. You're tricking them to eat a dry fly and it is just wonderfully fun. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I just wish the big ones would play along this way now. A little better fish. Doing the brook trout boogie. There he goes. After a fun morning of brook trip fishing, I decided to take the ATV back to the lodge, hop into another boat, and headed for another lake to try my hand at locating bigger smallmouth. I had a feeling the sun would bring some big ones into the shallows hunting for food. First cast. That surprised me. So what I nice. what I did was I actually switched things up from yesterday and I put the heavy fly on the back end as opposed to the, the point fly. And uh, it's a big, big brown crayfish looking thing that uh, has a giant bead head on it. And it's led by a Scotty's McFly. So it looks like something's chasing down this minnow. And I'm I'm sold, man. Like first cast. Maybe today is the day that we can actually do some experimenting. Try some different things. Fun smallmouth. Pre-spawn. Looks like a male, not a giant female, but nice nonetheless. Got him. It came out of the same hole. I switched flies once again to an even darker, smaller fly. And it just shows you how oppor opportunistic they are. Oh my gosh. You know, you, you sting one, and then you put on something different, it comes back. Oh yeah, great smallmouth. <laughs> I love it when it all comes together. Look at this. What an absolute stud smallmouth bass. I feel like that. <laughs> Equipment used on this Northeastern Ontario smallmouth bass pre-spawn adventure is as follows. My first setup, which was for small woolly buggers and poppers, is a finesse rod. It's a nine foot six weight rod paired with a six weight weight forward floating line. Now the leader is a nine foot tapered leader in the 3X size. And that, you know, as you're nipping it down, you're just keeping to add 3X tippet to that rod. The second rod, is a six weight as well. It's also a nine foot rod, but it's a distance rod. It's a stiffer rod for placing longer casts and for shooting larger flies. The line is an intermediate sinking line. And the leader material is a nine foot two X tapered leader. Again, adding two X tippet as you nip it back. And that is to be able to cast flies such as this larger Murdoch minnow for these smallmouth bass. Now the reels on both were a mid arbor reel, uh, really just a vessel to hold your line uh, so you can make a variety of presentations with these two setups for these great Northeastern Ontario smallies. Flies to consider at this time of year include minnow patterns such as clouser minnows, 
Game Changers, and Murdich Minnows. Crawfish patterns are a must-have as well, be they natural crayfish patterns like brown and black woolly buggers or one of the most deadly crawfish patterns, the Bronze Goddess. And one technique to have in your arsenal is to have a variety of stonefly patterns in your box. Consider tying a trailer nymph off a minnow pattern, crayfish, or even suspended under a popper. The big fly will attract the bass, and more often than not, they will, because of the cold water, key in on the nymph. This is an amazing cold water technique. One of the things that I love about drive to fishing lodges is that often you can literally drive to a lake that you want to fish. Uh, and that's what we're doing today. We're going to a lake that's off the beaten path. We're going to take our own trucks, drive into the lake, and then get ferried into the, into the body of water to fish for smallmouth bass. Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge has access to numerous lakes that um, often you're the only angler there. How perfect is that? So we've come into this new lake this morning and uh, I've never been here, don't have any recon on it. All I know is that there's smallmouth bass and northern pike in here. Um, so I immediately saw a rocky shoreline and that's where I'm gonna start. Rocks, obviously is structure, key for smallmouth bass. So I'm gonna switch my leader to a 3X leader and I'm gonna start on top water this morning. If I can get them to eat on top, that is absolutely amazing. There could there be a fish in there. Water walker, nice. So the top water bite didn't work this morning where I thought it would. So I switched over to a streamer, which is just subsurface. Uh, it's a white uh, Murdich minnow. And this little guy came up and whacked it. But look at the, look at the size of the head of the fly versus the size of the fish. You can't tell me that smallmouth bass aren't, aren't the kings of these waters. Jumpy. Nice little smallmouth. Awesome. And here's that fly. It's a Murdich minnow, big holographic eye. Fat head body with a slender tail with a little bit of flash in it. Awesome fly for small monkey. Actually, it's an awesome multi-species fly for sure. Big difference between one and none, boys. Because you feel like it's gonna happen. There's a fish. Now, that's one thing I like about these Murdich minnows too, is that, that's a good bass is that uh, you can see them in the water really clearly. And then sometimes they just disappear. <laughs> They're just gone. And then you set the hook. Yeah, good fish. Really good bass. These Northern Ontario fish are so strong. They've got cold water all season long. They feed and feed and feed. And they grow big. It's super powerful. All right, let's get him in the net. Right in. And 
away they go. So when you're fishing with bright flies, big visual flies, don't be afraid. Don't ever take your eyes off them because I didn't even feel that fish. All of a sudden that fly just disappeared, set the hook and it was on. Well, that's about all the time we have for this show. I'd like to thank Tony and Melissa at Lost Lake Wilderness Lodge for hosting us. Remember, adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more on the show, check us out at thenewflyfisher.com. For everybody here at The New Fly Fisher, my name's Mark Melnick. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you one day soon in the wilds of northeastern Ontario. The New Fly Fisher is brought to you in partnership with Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,